And welcome back to WGN TV Political Report. Mayor Lori Lightfoot is preparing to leave office next month after four years on the fifth floor of City Hall. She promised to spread economic development to the city's south and west sides and is closing out her term with a winning bid for the 2024 Democratic National Convention. Well, Samir Mayakar is the deputy mayor for economic and neighborhood development. He joins me this morning to talk more about that and much more. Samir, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me and good morning it. to you. Yeah, so let's start with the DNC. Um, maybe the mayor's swan song, but, but what a way to leave office uh, getting that convention. Uh, talk about what that means to the city from your perspective in terms of development. Well, look, as someone who worked deeply on this bid, I can just tell you how amazingly exciting this is for the city. We will be showcased on the international stage and to beat other very competitive bids by Houston, by New York, by Atlanta. Um, I think it really proves that Chicago is where it's at. And this event is going to be hugely stimulative to the Chicago economy and will take place both at the United Center, which is the largest arena of its kind in the country, and McCormick Place, which is also the largest convention center in North America. So it shows we have the assets to be competitive versus our peer cities. And planning already underway, right? It's over here. Well underway. Uh, you know, the reality is that the, the mayor actually signed the contract with the uh, Democratic Party just a few days ago and it was a deeply negotiated contract that's about this thick so um, this had been many many months in the making. Uh, let me talk about the Invest Southwest uh, in general this is was the mayor's Marshall Plan uh, as she referred to it so as her term comes to an end obviously working with corporate and philanthropic partners how successful was this effort for four years? Well we are deeply proud of Invest Southwest uh, when the mayor first came into office, there really wasn't a big, robust pipeline of projects for development on the south or the west side. And in a little less than four years, we have helped mobilize over $2.2 billion of investment commitments in 10 neighborhoods on the south and west side. It is a different day for projects on the south and the west side, and I'm very proud that as the baton is handed to the next administration, that there will also be a commitment to continuing that path for investment on the south and the west side. And there's other projects as well. Let's talk about, again, one of the last major projects. The mayor is uh, sort of overseeing the $3.8 billion, 48-acre uh, Bronzeville Lakefront mega development, break breaking ground at the Michael Reese Center. Where does that get left? Well, we broke ground on this just a few weeks ago, actually, and as someone who lives very close to Brownsville, I'm excited about this project. And it's going to start with infrastructure and building out the streets there on that former Michael Reese site, which you might remember was supposed to be the Olympic Village. Yes. And so uh, now we're putting that site to productive use, and there's already identified uses that have gone through the city council. But what excites me is that it really moves development continuing on the south side of the city, and $3.8 billion is a lot of funding and there's excitement about what's going to be happening there in the future of Brownsville. I had hernia surgery when I was four in that hospital, so I remember it. Let's, let's talk a bit about the LaSalle Reimagined project. That's an amazing uh, venture that's going on, taking over different, different developers. Um, Michael Reschke, the developer, talk about where that gets left. So LaSalle Street, iconic. This is where I work in City Hall. But if you walk down LaSalle Street, you'll see sometimes people taking wedding pictures. It's a very beautiful landscape. But also, it's a corridor that is, in planning terms, it's called a monoculture, mm -hmm. over 90% offices. So what we've done, thanks to the mayor's leadership, is we now have over $600 million of development split across three landmark buildings from the Great Depression era. And this is going to be the largest office-to-apartment conversion in America. So you're going to have over 1,000 units of housing, so people can now live on LaSalle Street. And over 300 of those units will be affordable. So it means if you are a worker in a building, uh, you can now afford to live on LaSalle Street, not just if you're a white collar worker, but if you're working in a cafeteria or if you're cleaning that building. And that has never happened downtown. I imagine the one thing that people will truly remember the mayor for in her term is the Riverfront, Bally's Riverfront Casino. Um, is that on autopilot at this point, or are there still things that can get in the way? Well, as you know, no project is ever on autopilot. It takes very <laughs> steady leadership. Uh, but what I can say is that there's something called a host community agreement. This is a legal agreement that the city and the city council struck with Bally's. So this project is well underway, starting with the Medina Temple as the temporary site, which should open later this year, subject to approval by something called the Illinois Gaming Board. And then we hope that the Bally's site on the Tribune site will actually open in 2026. NASCAR. You hear mixed about that, right? There's excitement at the same time. People are like, what did they do into the city here? So uh, is this a good thing for the city? Undoubtedly. And here's why. As people 
aren't back in the office 100%, and we need to keep Chicago competitive and keep a vibrancy downtown. An event like NASCAR, which is the first street race of its kind that NASCAR has ever done, and they're going to invest over $60 million uh, building this facility, and it'll have a huge economic impact. What's even more important is the hundreds of millions of media impressions that will be positive that Chicago will earn. And I can tell you, as someone who's in the room while we were working on the DNC, events like NASCAR, like Lollapalooza, like Sueños, these were the questions we got to prove that we can do big things in Chicago. Only half a minute left. As your term ends, you were not the typical fit for this role when you came in, didn't exactly come out of the traditional corporate world. You're only 35. Um, what will you look back on in these four years and say, that's what this was about? Well, what I am so proud of is that we truly found a way to stimulate economic growth downtown and in the neighborhoods. And we did it while managing through a 100-year crisis in the pandemic. I'm so proud of what's been accomplished these four years. And I feel very positive about the economic trajectory of the city. And so while we hand this baton of governance on, and ultimately government is a long relay race, I know that the future of the city is better than when, when we inherited it, and that's even after a 100-year crisis. I will treasure that time in government. Deputy Mayor Samir Mayakar, thank you for being with me. Mr. Deputy Mayor, like the ring of that, right? Uh, <laughs> appreciate that. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you so much. You too. Coming up next with two mass shootings in nearly two weeks, will lawmakers uh, reconsider taking action on guns? Plus, the fight over abortion access continues. Talking with Congressman Brad Schneider about that and a lot more when we come back.